everyone welcome back uh, we discussed uh, friction and its effect on supersonic or subsonic flows when it is compressible we figured out that it was going towards m equal to 1 at that point now uh, we already did this analysis where we said that uh, change in entropy was going to be either due to convergence of heat into a fluid element or because of dissipation of heat due to friction. We currently figure we used the situation where we said this was 0 and we said this exists that was till last class from today we are going to say this does not exist and only this exists ok. We are going to say only heat transfer exists there is no friction ok inviscid flow is what we are going to think about right now and this is also a non isentropic process as you can see because I am adding heat to the system and entropy increases ok. But that also says that if this whole term happens to be negative my entropy decreases ok that means heat is going out of my fluid and my entropy will decrease for the fluid that may also happen ok. Now we will go think about that can entropy decrease etcetera later. So now what kind of problems will I have to think about when I say I want heat transfer okay, I am thinking about heat transfer should I consider heat transfer something like it is temperature of the gas is increasing by 1 Kelvin or 2 Kelvin etcetera or should I consider really big changes that is the idea we are going to discuss first. I would say it depends on what is the already existing energy in the fluid element and how much is the change only based on that I can now tell whether the heat tradition is actually important or can I neglect it ok, it is related to what is the already existing energy in the fluid and is it going to significantly change because I added some extra heat or removed some extra heat ok whatever added or removed that is going to change my energy in the system if it is changing significantly and I am worried about that significant that change if it is significant enough then I will have to worry about that heat transfer also and I have to take into account whether that heat transfer is going to affect my problem or not otherwise I will neglect it typically the example which people give will be in a combustion chamber there is flow through a duct and it is burning inside typically in gas turbine engines there is going to be a duct which is called the combustion chamber and you are going to inject fuel inside and it is going to burn by the time it gets out of the chamber it is fully burnt and it is hot products coming out of that chamber okay. if that is the situation now what should be my exit condition will it become Mach 1 that kind of question is what we are going to ask ok. I am slightly jumping ahead of myself in here but anyways typical example where heat transfer matters a lot happens to be combustion ok. One very common example for aerospace application happens to be this anyways. Now in actual combustion of gases we will have composition changing of course you know that if I have methane and air mixing to and then burning. I am going to produce carbon dioxide and water there is not going to be any of methane or oxygen present if I think about stoichiometric mixture in the products ok which means my composition completely changed which means my heat capacity the Cp values, Cv values, the gamma, the ratio of Cp by Cv they all are going to change also the molecular weight of the gas which means my R for the gas specific gas constant will also change ok but in this simple gas dynamics course we are going to neglect all of these changes which I just now talked about I am going to say there is no composition change so my Cp values are exactly going to be the same before and after heat addition I am going to say gamma exactly remains the same R exactly remains the same these are my assumptions currently this is a simplifying assumptions of course you can take into account all these changes and still work through the problem that is just more tedious we would not want to go through that right now. So, we will go into assumptions for my flow with heat addition ok. Flow with heat addition I am going to say it is 1D flow steady no friction no body force ok 
uh, no mass addition by the way it is no mass addition means negative or positive so no addition or subtraction of mass there okay i'm going to assume cp constant i'm going to assume ideal gas so when these two are together what does this mean cp constant and ideally ideal gas what is this something more than just perfect gas calorically perfect gas okay yeah? that is what it is going to be okay. Uh, composition does not change composition I will call it fixed I do not want to write does not change there and no external forces no body force no any no, no any force interaction no force interaction external. with the outside other than the force on the wall due to pressure that is always going to be there okay. other things are not existing say I do not want to put a fan inside and add work to my gas or I do not want to have any body force which is always going to add energy to the flow or remove energy from the flow I do not want any of those situations that kind of force interactions we do not want to have. So, with all these assumptions whatever we did as 1 D simplified uh, 1D steady flow whatever equations we used long back when we derived the very first time the equations of motion they will be obeying most of these uh, assumptions. So, I can start using those equations here I am going to say mass conservation I will have oh I one more thing I want to add here is constant area duct. also constant area duct one more assumption I want to add ok. So, I will have rho 1 a u 1 equal to rho 2 a u 2 ok. So, now I can write rewrite this thing as rho 1 u 1 equal to rho 2 u 2 equal to m dot by a this is the same as what we did for final flow not much of difference oh by the way this particular flow is called the Rayleigh flow. Rayleigh flow and uh, in differential form we know that this particular equation can be written as d rho by rho plus d u by u equal to 0 these two we already derived anyways okay. now we will go for momentum conservation since it is 1 d I do not want to say x momentum or y momentum it is just momentum p 1 plus rho 1 u 1 square equal to p 2 plus rho 2 u 2 square by the way this is a very special case of our regular momentum equation where I am saying there is no force on the side walls because it is a constant area duct yeah the area is going to be constant there is no p 2 minus p 1 into d a by 2 kind of terms do not exist in or we called it as just f x we do not have any of that term in here in this simple situation ok. This in differential form will give me d p plus rho u d u equal to 0 I have also used that rho u is a constant in here already ok we did this kind of derivations long back I just reminded you now. Energy conservation this is the case where it will change from all the previous assumptions now I am going to say energy is going to be coming into the system. So, that is not the same as what we had before previously we have been assuming adiabatic now energy is coming into the system. So, my expression will be slightly different h 1 plus u 1 square by 2 plus some q the net heat coming in per unit mass ok because everything else is per unit mass energy per mass equal to h 2 plus u 2 square by 2 I am assuming that there is a duct the inlet section is 1 exhaust section is 2 that kind of system I am assuming currently and I am saying the net heat inside this whole duct happens to be q uh, small q I am using that is a net heat content per unit mass of fluid going through that is what I am having there ok. 
okay, if I think about Q, it is going to be my heat flux Q dot divided by M dot. Okay, if I think about continuous flow with some particular mass flow rate, this will be the heat flow rate or power spent on this. It is not heat flux really, it is power, okay. it is coming in there. So, I will rewrite this expression in terms of T naught because this you know that this is your H naught 1 and this is your H naught 2. I can write that assuming C p is constant, I can rewrite this whole thing as T naught 2 minus T naught 1 equal to Q by C p. Okay. This is simple enough and this is going to give me D T naught is equal to Q by C p, the differential form. This is the integral form and that is the differential form. These are the expressions we have. Now the next equation, as of now we used mass momentum energy, next one is ideal gas law. That is still going to be the exact same thing, P equal to R T. So I can write my dP by P equal to d rho by rho plus dt by t, that is going to be this expression. From here on we are going to do similar exercise as what we did for my fan of flow where I want to write every one of these quantities dp by p, d rho by rho, dt by t, etc. in terms of du by u. Okay, I want to see what if velocity changes by a small fraction, I want to write everything else in terms of that. So easiest thing to do d rho by rho from mass equation will be minus of du by u. Now I will have to find dt by t in terms of du by u and now I can go and look at my this equation momentum equation, I can get a dp by p from here in terms of du by u. We did this last time, I will just go through it a little fast, dp by p is equal to minus rho u by p du, now I will put u square by u here, so this is the term I have, now I want to express this in some other way, we know that this is going to be equal to minus gamma m square du by u, how do I know that, p equal to rho rt, so I will just put rho rt here, I will just have rt at the denominator, I will put gamma above and below, then I will have gamma times u square by gamma rt, then that becomes m m square. This is one expression I have dp by p. Now I will put this along with d rho by rho equal to minus du by u from mass equation into my p equal to rt expression. So I am going to have dt by t is equal to dp by p minus d rho by rho which is equal to minus gamma m square du by u plus du by u. So I am going to get 1 minus gamma m square times du by u. Okay. Previously when we derived these kind of expressions, we never ended up with this relation. Okay. This is now different, this is because previously we assumed that T naught was a constant and that was a constraining condition and from there we got a different expression for dt by t. Now I cannot do that, so I am going through some other path and I am getting to some other expression because of that, okay. Based on the assumptions, it is the same set of relations anyway, mass, momentum, energy, entropy, x definition, Mach number definition, ideal gas, these are standard set of expressions. I will just put different conditions on them and the expressions change because of that, okay. Now I will next go and do. Uh, I also did d rho by rho, I will just write it here, d rho by rho equal to minus du by u, this is coming from mass equation, this is not anything special, I just wanted to write all these expressions together, okay. Now I will go and use uh, t naught equal to t plus u square by 2 Cp, I am again assuming Cp is constant and h naught is this particular definition, I am having this, so I am going to write d t naught equal to dt plus derivative of this will be u du by Cp, that is the expression I have there. Now I want to substitute for 
d t from my d t by t here. Okay. So, I will take this t that side and that will become my d t directly. So, it is going to be t, I will pull out a d u by u together. So, I will have an expression d u by u times t is outside 1 minus gamma m square is inside. This is for the first term plus the next term I want d u by u. So, I want to look at d u by u will become u square by c p as the inside term. I will write u square by c p separately. This can be written as u square by gamma r gamma minus 1 goes to the numerator this expression. I will multiply and divide by t. So, I am getting this as m square. So, gamma minus 1 m square times t that is what I am getting here right. And now, I have d u by u times this expression and I am pulling out t times d u by u out. So, I will get gamma minus 1 m square. If you derive this once it will make your life comfortable ok. Anyways, so now I can simplify this a little bit. I know minus gamma m square will cancel with this plus gamma m square. I will have a minus m square there and 1 here that still remains. So, I am going to end up with d t naught is equal to 1 minus m square t times d u by u. This is one more relation. Now, the next thing I want to think about is uh, entropy expression, entropy relation v naught d s is equal to C p d t by t minus r d p by p. This we derived in the first two classes somewhere. Okay. I have this relation. Now, I know d t by t in terms of d u by u and d p by p in terms of d u by u. So, I can just substitute them directly. I will pull out c p continuously out of everything and d u by u outside. Then I will have 1 minus gamma m square that is coming from my d p by d t by t d t by t and then I have minus this r has to be rewritten in terms of c p what will that be gamma minus 1 by gamma ok. So, I can rewrite that it will come out to be gamma minus 1 by gamma times d p by p is minus. So, I am going to cut this minus and gamma m square d u by u I already taken out this is what I will have. Now, I will cancel this gammas. So, I will just have gamma minus 1 times m square there. I will write it once more 1 minus gamma m square plus gamma m square minus m square because these two get cancelled. So, I have 1 minus m square times C p. So, I will write this expression as d s by C p is equal to 1 minus m square times d u by u. One more important relation. Now, as it is always customary for us, we will convert everything in terms of d m by m, that is the only thing left. So, I want to write Mach number relation m equal to u by square root of gamma r t. So, this is going to give me d m by m equal to d u by u minus half d t by t. I think it is a very simple derivation you can just derive it in no time we will not do it right now. So, I have this now I will substitute this d t by t in terms of d u by u that is again a simpler thing to do. So, I will just put it here d u by u common factor 1 minus half times d t by t was 1 minus gamma m square times d u by u. So, that is this. So, now if you think about it 2 minus 1 will get cancelled you will just have 1 plus gamma m square by 2 ok that will be your final relation. 
dm by m equal to 1 plus gamma m square by 2 du by u. One more relation. So, we had a whole bunch of relations. I want to write all of them in one place, so that it will be in one place in your notes really. And it is easier to discuss after that point. So, I will write it all together d p by p is minus gamma m square d u by u d rho by rho equal to minus d u by u t t by t equal to 1 minus gamma m square d u by u d m by m equal to 1 plus gamma m square whole by 2 times d u by u and there is only one more thing left d s by c p equal to 1 minus m square times d u by u this is equal to d t naught by t this is one thing I did not talk about till now. Okay, it so happens that I derived separately d t naught, I derived separately d s. It so happens that they both will give you this kind of expression, which you will see right now, we just der derived this. Okay. Is this correct? It is correct, just simply by looking at this, I am going to tell let us d s is equal to C p d t naught by t. C p d t naught is your net heat added to your system. right? So, I am getting an expression that looks like q by t, d s equal to q by t was the basic definition for entropy change, right. So, I am getting back to that expression from here, so everything is matching, so I will not worry about this, okay, whatever we have written till now is all correct. Now, when I look at these expressions, typically we always had this 1 minus m square term, which is why my behavior changes when across m equal to 1. Right, that is always been the case, but this time we are having a term 1 minus gamma m square okay, and that is going to change things now. Okay. Uh, so, I have a term 1 minus m square, I also have a term 1 minus gamma m square. So, there is going to be a change when m equal to 1, one of the critical points where things change is m equal to 1 and another critical point is when 1 minus gamma m square equal to 0, which will happen when 1 by gamma square root, so m equal to 1 by square root gamma. These are the two critical points where the behavior of the flow might change, okay. Other places it is going to be a same trend, no difference, okay. Now, uh, is this more than 1 or less than 1? Gamma is always greater than 1. So, now I am going to say that this is always a subsonic value. So, in subsonic range, there is going to be, I have to think about 0 to 1 by square root gamma is one case, 1 by square root gamma less than m less than 1 as another case and m greater than 1 as third case or 1 less than m as a third case whatever. So, these are the cases we have, now I have to study each of these separately, okay. That is the basic idea. Now, because of this I am going to put a big table. similar to what you have been doing all the other cases, I will just put a table saying u increases, u decreases and here I am going to talk about various Mach number ranges, m less than 1 by square root of gamma that is the first range, the second range is 1 by square root gamma less than m less than 1, third case m greater than 1. These are the three cases I am going to look at. Okay. Now, we will pick variables one by one. I will pick Mach number first. So, when u increases, where is my dm by m that is here? 
for whatever m value I am always going to have this number positive, it is never going to change sign. So, if u increases m increases, if u decreases m decreases, so it is going to be same direction. So, I will just look at all these arrows and just put the same thing for as u for m. That is what happens for Mach number. Next, I will look at pressure. dp is negative of some positive quantity times du. Okay. If I look at this, then I am going to say m square is always positive, of course. Whatever is the change in u, the opposite will be the change in p. Okay, if uh, du is positive, dp is negative, pressure decreases when velocity increases. So, it is straight opposite of this relation, I will just go and put the opposite arrow of these. Oops, these go the other way. This is what happens there. Next is density. I will just write density and temperature together. Okay. So, we will first look at density. Of course, d rho by rho is minus d u by u. So, it is going to be inverse relation with respect to velocity. What this says is pressure and density goes the same way. Okay, pressure and density go the same way. Temperature, this is where the funny stuff happens. 1 minus gamma m square changes sign across gamma equal to uh, m equal to 1 by square root gamma. That will happen when m equal to uh, 1 by square root gamma and more, if it is more, then the value will be negative. Okay. So, if it is, if Mach number is higher than 1 by square root gamma, u and t are inversely related otherwise they are directly related. So, when it is lesser, it is directly related, u increases, t increases. Here u decreases, t decreases. But all the other cases, it is more than 1 by square root gamma, so it is going to go the opposite direction, u increases, t decreases. Here u decreases, so t increases. This is what happens there. Now, there are two more variables left and you know that uh, they are s and t naught and they are directly related to each other. So, I will just put s and you know it is the same for t naught also. If you want you can put comma t naught next to it also, I will just do one of them. s and t naught are exactly going the same way. Okay. Now, I will look at this expression d s is 1 minus m square times d u. So, this is having a critical point across m equal to 1. So, I am saying if velocity increases, entropy increases for m less than 1. Okay. So, m less than 1 are the first two rows. So, entropy increases for these two cases. If velocity decreases, entropy decreases. Okay. Now, if it is m greater than 1, this is 1 minus m square will become negative. So, if velocity increases, entropy decreases. So, this will go the opposite direction. Okay. This is what I am seeing. And I just wanted to make a few comments on this. The first one I want to see is d s is same as d t naught. This says that if my t naught increases, that means I am giving heat to my flow, right. If I add heat, then my t naught increases. So, if I give heat to the flow, my first comment happens to be heating causes entropy to increase, cooling causes entropy to decrease. So, can I have cooling? you can still have it, why? Entropy is decreasing, will it happen in nature? Yeah, that is what we need to think about. All this time in all the other problems before 
last class or including last class, we had the situation where there was no other interaction with the surroundings. The only system that I have was my gas flow and there was nothing else outside. But this time I am opening out thermodynamic world outside this gas also. So now I have a system and a surrounding around it. Okay. If I have this gas flow duct and I am having heat coming into it, oh that was an easy problem, right? We will pick the tougher problem, heat flowing out of it. Hey, if heat is flowing out of it, then entropy inside here is decreasing, but I am heating the surroundings and that entropy increases. And since I am losing heat from a small place and giving it to a large volume, typically I am going to increase entropy because most of the molecules are happy there while little less, less some small amount of molecules are sad if you think about it that way, right. We already discussed the sad versus happy for entropy, right. So it is going to become something like that, okay. So overall I am going to have net entropy increasing a little bit, okay. So this whole system is still possible. This is the reason why refrigerators work still. That is also a real case where I am cooling the items inside my refrigerator and it still works because entropy overall is increasing. Okay. The next main point I want to tell, when I say overall it is entropy of the universe, okay, that is including system and surroundings net entropy change is greater than 0. Next main point I want to say m less than 1. heat addition m less than 1 heat addition I am going to have velocity increasing Mach number increasing heat removal velocity decreases Mach number decreases now I will put m greater than 1 Okay, by the way, these are observations from this table. Okay, I am saying m less than 1 are the top two rows. I am finding that if velocity increases, I am adding heat to the system. Okay. Entropy increases, T naught increases. I told T naught is same as S. Maybe I will just write it also. T naught increases, T naught increases, T naught decreases. And the same thing the other side. I did not have space, so I did not write it. But, anyways, entropy and T naught are going to go exactly same way. If my T naught increases, I am heating the flow. I am heating the flow here and I am finding that my Mach number increases, my velocity increases for m less than 1. When it is m greater than 1, when I cool, then my velocity increases. Okay. So these arrows are going to be flipped across here. If I have heat addition, then u decreases, m decreases. removal, heat removal, then I am going to have u increases, m increases. Now you want to look at this again. When I look at this, if I am subsonic, if I add heat, I am increasing Mach number. If I am supersonic, if I add heat, I am decreasing Mach number. Okay. So it looks like they are both converging towards m equal to 1 if I add heat. Okay. If I add heat, This is going to go m towards 1. Okay. If I remove heat, then I am going to go m away from 1. Okay. Main thing you need to remember are these two. Okay. If I add heat, my system is going to tend towards m equal to 1. That is what these four lines are saying basically. Okay. And if I remove heat, I am going to have my Mach number going away from m equal to 1. Very important things we have to remember. Okay. And we have some special thing across m equal to uh, 1 by square root gamma, where I will just point it out here itself. The only change is it is going to switch the relation between T and U. That is why you got that relation anyways. When I am subsonic and below that critical gamma, if I add heat, my velocity and temperature both are going to increase. But beyond some point, 
velocity increases but temperature decreases okay the reason being if you go think about it the reason being the density drop is much more when i am going closer to m equal to 1 that the compressibility effects are becoming so serious that uh, they have to go the opposite direction to match p equal to rt and rho u equal to constant okay to do that it has to go the other way that is the basic idea in here okay i am still adding heat but it is going the other direction because density change is going to be too strong around that region okay. actually it's uh, pressure and temperature if you look at the changes you will see that density change is going to do that okay so now the next thing is i want to go draw ts diagram for this i want to see the state change on a state diagram so i'll draw a really big plot this time this is entropy and this is temperature these are my axes so i'm going to say i'm starting with some t1 and that will have a particular t01 this is the current situation and i'm going to say this is my actual state location this happens to be my s1 so i can draw a pressure line through this that's my p1 and if i go with the same entropy isentropic conditions and i meet the t0 that give becomes my p01 curve this is my actual state location that p01 is a imaginary location stagnation condition now from here if i heat the flow i know my entropy increases if i heat the flow ds is dt not so it's going to increase heat it's going to go to the right now i want to look at what happens to temperature let us assume that my mach number is really really small if my mach number is really really small i am in the first row my temperature should increase entropy should increase which means i'm going up and to the right okay from here i'm going to go up and to the right something like this i'll try and use another color for my actual relay line uh, la actual relay flow curve it's going to do something like this and my state points are going to move along this curve okay and uh, if i am at that particular mach number where this term becomes zero m equal to 1 by square root gamma then temperature doesn't change when velocity is increasing okay when velocity is increasing i'm going to have heat addition okay for subsonic conditions from this relation i can tell that if my velocity increases i'm adding heat for subsonic conditions but temperature doesn't change that means i'm going to have a slope that's going to be horizontal because temperature doesn't change but my entropy increases it's going to go flat without changing temperature that happens to be that special point m equal to 1 by square root gamma okay that's my special condition if i go beyond that point now i'm on the second row the main change is only in this particular term dt by t is equal to 1 minus gamma m square du by u everything else just obeys the same thing as before if it is subsonic it behaves the same way okay that one thing now velocity increases when i heat velocity increases temperature decreases okay entropy increases temperature decreases that's what i need for ts diagram so i'm going to look at this and draw my ts diagram entropy increases temperature decreases so it's going to drop down how far there will be a point where i'll reach m equal to 1 i'm continuously increasing mach number i'll reach m equal to 1 at m equal to 1 we'll go back and look at this expression where 1 minus m square is present at m equal to 1 i'm going to have a condition where ds is zero okay which means entropy cannot change anymore at that location so i'll have to have a vertical slope for that condition so i'll make it vertical slope and i'll mark that particular critical point m equal to 1 now i'll start from the other side supersonic section i'll say it's the same p not i'll start with a supersonic section that will be somewhere here let's say 
this is my one prime I will call it, I should call it T1 prime, I will call it T1 prime. So, I will have a P1 prime going through this, P1 prime going through this. Now, I want to see if it is supersonic condition m greater than 1, I am going to go from here. Of course, if I heat my entropy increases, I want to see what happens to temperature. Okay. m greater than 1, oh this is decreasing T naught, I want increasing T naught that is this, I find that temperature increases. Entropy increases, temperature increases when I heat, when I heat in this particular case. So, I am again going to go up and to the right. and this keeps on happening till m equal to 1 and the curve looks something like this. Do not quote me on this particular shape exactly, the shape can be anything depending on it can even be something like this depending on whatever are your constraints, we would not worry about that currently. Okay. We will keep one particular curve, we would not pick another curve currently. So, we have this particular curve. Okay. So, now if I think about another point where it reaches, let us say I pick this point and call it 2. Of course, I went from P1 to P2 from here to here, what should happen? I should know that I am adding heat to a subsonic system in the first row, right? Adding heat to subsonic system in the first row, pressure decreases which means now my P2 must be slightly less than P1, it so, so looks like they are all on the same curve and you should know that this curve is slightly below the other curve if I extend it, that is how it should look, okay. should be slightly below that, I am not drawing very exactly currently. Okay. And P0 also you will find that will drop, I did not write that in the table, P0 also drops that will also be a little lower. this will be my S2 and that particular point is your T02, this is what happens there. Okay. Ideally, if I have drawn it correctly, I will find that the kinetic energy, the gap between these two is going to be increasing. The T0 and T1, the gap is here u square by 2 Cp, that is supposed to be increasing it looks like they are almost the same, that means I have not drawn it correctly, it should have dropped a little earlier the orange curve, okay. But anyways, if I keep on adding heat further, I will go towards m equal to 1. So, I will have a condition where I am having a P star, what are we finding here? My pressure is continuously dropping to a lower and lower and lower lower curve, just coming to a lower curve and my P naught also will be, uh, this is my P naught 2, my P naught star will be a still lower curve somewhere here, this is my P naught star and I will find that my T naught must have increased for that. Let us say that is my T naught, I should have drawn it right, I missed the star point, so I will draw it the reverse way. This is my P naught star curve, that will be my stagnation state P naught T naught condition. And now I am finding that from here as I added heat, I am also accelerating the flow and now your kinetic energy is much higher, T naught star minus T star is your kinetic energy and that is very high currently, all that you are seeing. Now if I did the same thing from supersonic condition, you are finding that my velocity will decrease, T naught 1 is here, T naught T 1 prime is here, from here all the way to here is my kinetic energy currently u square by 2 Cp. And as I go towards m equal to 1, I am decreasing the amount of kinetic energy present, okay. If you look at uh, P naught 1, that is more than P naught 2, which is more than P naught star, okay. That is always going to be the case, okay. This is going to be the general trend, okay. Now, we can start talking about uh, P naught variation and uh, similar to your uh, fan of flow conditions what will happen if I start from one Mach number and I keep on adding heat, it is going to go along this curve if it is subsonic, 
it's going to go like that and then it's going to go reach this point that's what we saw right if it is heating it is going to go towards m equal to 1 if i remove heat it is going to go in the opposite direction of this curve from m equal to 1 it's going to go away but it's going to be on this line why will it be always on this line alone because i am having i am already having mass flow constant if i had some other mass flow then it will be shifting the curve will shift okay if i have uh, lower mass flow then the curve shifts to outside envelope it goes one row out of this one okay that's what happens here if i draw another curve outside this will be higher mass flow condition that is what happens okay similar to fan of flow conditions Anyway, we will go look at what happens uh, numerically some other time. Today, I just still have to give some more expressions to you. Maybe I won't finish all of them. So, I want to have every result in terms of m so that I can now have a table generated. Okay. So, I want p2 by p1 in terms of Mach number 1 and Mach number 2, like that. Okay. So, I will just look at my momentum equation. Now, of course, you know that I can rewrite things like rho equal to p by r t multiply and divide by gamma and now I can rearrange this such that I can get uh, gamma m square in here. Okay? If I put u square along with it, I will get gamma m square also. Okay? We will keep it like this. Now, from here you can rearrange this rho substituted in there and you will get that expression to be p 1 multiplied by 1 plus gamma m 1 square equal to p 2 multiplied by 1 plus gamma m 2 square. This is not new by the way, this is the same expression you got for shocks, normal shocks. p 2 by p 1 is 1 plus gamma m 1 square divided by 1 plus gamma m 2 square. This is one relation you have. And of course, now I can make this uh, simplified version, I can give this as p by p star. I am substituting one of them as uh, m equal to 1 condition and I can get a p by p star also from here. If I do a p by p star, I am substituting uh, 1 as m, m 1 as 1, 1 plus gamma divided by 1 plus gamma m square, I am just having m square now, I am interested in one particular Mach number and I am comparing it with star value. So, it is just one m square and not m 1 or m 2 there, okay. this is one relation. The next immediate relation you can easily get is p naught 2 by p naught 1, another easy relation to get. If I think about p naught 2 by p naught 1, I just have to use p 2 by p 1 multiplied by isentropic relations. So, it is p 2 by p 1 into 1 plus p naught 2 by p 2 will be in the numerator now minus 1 by 2 m 2 square divided by 1 plus now minus 1 by 2 m 1 square this whole thing to the power gamma by gamma minus 1 this is your isentropic relation for p naught by p. So, now I will substitute this inside here and you can get one relation ok, I'll just write it. This is another relation I have and this again I can write uh, p naught by p naught star and that is going to be 1 plus gamma divided by 1 plus gamma m square times, I will rewrite this expression a little bit, I have something else in my notes but it is okay gamma minus 1 m square divided by 1 plus gamma to the power gamma by gamma minus 1. Okay, I have this relation, another important expression given in tables, okay. one more expression. Now, we look at uh, 
next variable actually i think i'll stop here next variable will take a little longer so we'll derive the remaining two temperature density t naught and entropy later next class we'll do that yeah. see you people next class